Hello. Please hit like button and subscribe my channel. Also press bell icon for future video notifications. Thanks. Passive cooling, like the shade a tree provides, has been around forever. Recently, researchers have been exploring how to turbocharge a passive cooling technique, known as radiative or sky cooling, with sun blocking, nanomaterials that emit heat away from building rooftops. While progress has been made, this eco-friendly technology ISNT commonplace because researchers have struggled to maximize the material's cooling capabilities. New research led by University at Buffalo Engineers makes significant progress in this area. A study published February 8 in the journal Cell Reports Physical Science describes a uniquely designed radiative cooling system that lowered the temperature inside a test system in an outdoor environment under direct sunlight by more than 12 degrees Celsius 22 degrees Fahrenheit. Lowered the temperature of the test box in a laboratory, meant to simulate the night, by more than 14 degrees Celsius 25 degrees Fahrenheit. Simultaneously captured enough solar power that can be used to heat water to about 60 degrees Celsius 140 degrees Fahrenheit. While the system tested was only 70 centimeters 27. 5 inches squared, it could eventually be scaled up to cover rooftops, engineers say, with the goal of reducing society's reliance on fossil fuels for cooling and heating. It also could aid communities with limited access to electricity. There is a great need for heating and cooling in our daily life, especially cooling in the warming world, says the study's lead author Chao Kiang Gan, Ph.D., Professor of Electrical Engineering in the UB School of Engineering and Applied Sciences. The research team includes Zhang Fu Yu, Ph.D., University of Wisconsin-Madison, Boon Ui, Ph.D., King Abdullah University of Science and Technology Cost in Saudi Arabia, and members of GANS Lab at UB, and UA Lab at COST. System design and materials key to success The system consists of what are essentially two mirrors, made of ten extremely thin layers of silver and silicon dioxide, which are placed in a V-shape. These mirrors absorb incoming sunlight, turning solar power from visible and near-infrared waves into heat. The mirrors also reflect mid-infrared waves from an emitter, a vertical box in between the two mirrors, which then bounces the heat they carry into the sky. Since the thermal emission from both surfaces of the central thermal emitter is reflected to the sky, the local cooling power density on this emitter is doubled, resulting in a record high temperature reduction, says Gon. Most radiative cooling systems scatter the solar energy, which limits the system's cooling capabilities, Gan says. Even with a perfect spectral selection, the upper limit for the cooling power with an ambient temperature of 25 degrees Celsius is about 160 watts per square meter. In contrast, the solar energy of about 1,000 watts per square meter on top of those systems was simply wasted. Spin-off company aims to commercialize technology Gonco founded a spin-off company, Sunny Clean Water LLC, which is seeking partners to commercialize this technology.
One of the key innovations of our system is the ability to separate and retain the solar heating and radiative cooling at different components in a single system, says co-first author Liu Zhou, a PhD candidate in electrical engineering in the School of Engineering and Applied Sciences. During the night, radiative cooling is easy because we don't have solar input, so thermal emissions just go out and we realize radiative cooling easily. But daytime cooling is a challenge because the sun is shining. In this situation, you need to find strategies to separate solar heating from the cooling area. The work builds upon previous research GAN's lab led that involved creating a cone-shaped system for electricity-free cooling in crowded cities to adapt to climate change. The new double-sided architecture realized a record local cooling power density beyond 280 watts per square meter. Under standard atmospheric pressure with no vacuum thermal isolation, we realized a temperature reduction of 14. 5 degrees Celsius below the ambient temperature in a laboratory environment, and over 12 degrees Celsius in an outdoor test using a simple experimental system, says the other co-first. Importantly, our system does not simply waste the solar input energy. Instead, the solar energy is absorbed by the solar spectral selective mirrors, and it can be used for solar water heating, which is widely used as an energy-efficient device in developing countries, says Gan. It can retain both the solar heating and radiative cooling effects in a single system with no need of electricity. It's really sort of a magic system of ice and fur. The research team will continue to investigate ways to improve the technology, including examining how to capture enough solar power to boil water, making it suitable for drinking. The work was supported by funding from the U.S. National Science Foundation's Thermal Transport Processes Program. Please support my channel to grow by pressing subscribe button and the bell icon, we will notify you technological news. Thank you.